In this video, we're going to disassemble the oil pumps. All right, so this oil pump is off of my tractor. This one is off the parts tractor. This one feels a little, it's actually stuck. It'll turn a little bit, but not much. Now this parts tractor had the oil filter housing removed from the engine, which left this tube open. So it probably got rain in it and rusted it. We'll see when we get it apart. This one seems to be in pretty good shape so far. I have not looked at the inside yet, obviously. The way this works, you have a suction port here. It goes to the block and down to the pickup tube. Draws oil in. As the camshaft rotates this, it pumps oil. So this pumps out of this to the oil filter and to the cylinder head and to the governor. And then oil for the rotating assembly and camshaft come out of this shaft into the camshaft itself and then it lubricates the block port components. Inside of here there is a spring and a pin that goes across and a ball at the bottom. That's your pressure relief valve. All right. I'll take apart mine first. We'll go with this one. So far, it looks good. The engine gasket set will come with a new gasket for this. The way this thing works, this pump rotates this direction. You have these spring-loaded vanes, and they press tight against the housing. The oil pickup is on this side. So as this is rotating, you develop a gap here. It's going to draw oil in. And then lined up even with this hole, there is a hole in the side housing, and it's going to take that oil and force that oil into this hole, into the side, then out this hole. And it's going to go into here, through this passageway in the top housing, out the center. And it's basically going to pressurize through here and come out into the engine. So that's the way it works. And it is important that these veins are facing the right way. You can see a little taper. That is face the direction of rotation. Okay, so let's see if we take it apart without everything flying everywhere. All right, so there's a good amount of spring tension. That's good. It's got two springs and some piece of junk there. Let's clean one up and look at it close. Doesn't really look bad. So that shaft on the rotor has some grooves in it for sure. But when I'm moving it back and forth, there's no play. We'll see what the other one looks like. Let's see if I can take apart the pressure relief portion. So we pull this pin out. Had my finger to stop that spring from launching across the shop. Got a spring and a ball. Inside of here. This housing itself is, it's got grooves in it for sure, and you kind of feel the grooves in this blade also, so in this vein. But they're worn into each other, so it's probably not a bad thing. I 
probably polish both of these up a little and it'll be better off. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this other one real quick. That surface is definitely grooved a bit more than the other. Yeah, I don't know if it shows up on camera very well, but that one looks pretty grooved on top. And even the sides of these blades are worn. Something up here stopping it from rotating. Just go ahead and slide it out. So I'll tell you, another spot where there's wear where the pin on the camshaft engages this. It's worn a little on mine too, but not near as much to, as this one. Okay. These don't look worn much different than the one this other one except for the top half. Keep these separated anyway. Shaft here looks about the same as the other. I think if I polish that up, it'll be good to go. This housing looks about the same as the other one, too. There's just a lot of some corrosion at the top here. That's what was stopping it. So I think I'll go with all the parts off of this one. It seems to be in better shape for sure. That's good. I'm trying to keep as many original parts as I can. So I get these cleaned up and at some point put together an assembly video. But there's not much to it. I'll show you something that slowed me down today. I was going to get the carburetor painted and cleaned up. Parts everywhere here. I have to 3D print a new part for my sandblaster. So I got this Harbor Freight sandblaster here and I'm trying to make it a little better with a suction tube. Put together an assembly with PVC pipe where it comes down, this is a drain where I could drain it. But I drew up and printed this piece. This threads, threads in up here. And that end goes to your gun, siphon feed on the gun. And on this top port, there's a valve here to allow air to flow in. So you could mix a proper amount of air to the with the sand so it flows better. When I printed this, I printed some parts kind of thinner than I should have. And I didn't think it was a big deal because it's going to be down here untouched, except I got some water in my air this morning and clogged it up because it made the sand wet. So I'm tapping on it to knock the sand out as I'm blowing air through it. And I tapped a little too hard and broke it off. So Anyway, we're printing another one. One thing that makes it kind of stronger is this particular one I printed in this orientation. So the way the layer lines are set up, they break off easier. The new one I'm printing on the side, so the layer lines are come at a different angle and make it stronger. There's a whole bunch of parts waiting for it. All right, so hopefully next up, I will take apart steering gears and see if I can build a good one out of the two.